Let us uh, start this lecture with a thought process that is more we go away from traditional agriculture and textile technology by adopting mechanized methods more we drift from the humanity while inviting the awful anarchy in India. Of course, you might be thinking why it is so because this is will give you the peace of mind also sense of achievements by doing it and the body and mind will be balanced and also you will be self independent right. So, therefore, uh, and it will also give you employment to the populous country like India. So, therefore, it is important to keep our traditional technology, maybe little bit improvised person, but the basic philosophy of staying with the mother nature will be on the back of this all developments. <coughs> so, uh, let us uh, start this lecture with a Sant Kabir Das, you most of you will be knowing, he is a legendary weaver and a great poet and whose dohas are still popular and he was a weaver by profession and if you look at this is the loom what it was having and unfortunately I did not get details about this loom which I have shown here if you look at these are the warps and this will be cloth and then kind of things <coughs> this is quite interesting there are several looms uh, people were having earlier days but uh, those are gone with the passage of time due to the uh, blatant uh, use of uh, the modern uh, power looms. So, Indian hand looms if you look at technology is a very important one and then uh, let us ask a question what do you mean by a loom? Of course, by this time you will be aware, but uh, that loom is basically a device for making cloth by waving or kneading of yarn and thread right. That is you can define that way and whenever you use a hand for operating this loom we call it as a hand loom and uh, the hand loom industry was a cottage industry in ancient India and it was a part and parcel of most of the uh, you know not only most of the people not only in rural areas even in urban areas earlier days but today it is not the case and uh, this is the green production and uh, employ uh, you know employment uh, oriented work can be done and by this. So, that in other words it produces a lot of employments as I had uh, told you also given you data earlier. So, web winding is a very important one and uh, generally the yang yarn for webbed is wound onto a print or a small bobbin, bobbin kind of things which I had shown you earlier. And this uh, weft yarn is then inserted into a shuttle. If you look at uh, this is a, a typical uh, loom and this is the shuttle which will be carrying this small bobbin right for the weft. And this device uh, you know is basically uh, moving like in this directions and then coming back in the other directions and that will be by which the weft will be. Uh, wrapping of the warp and then you can make a cloth out of it. So, uh, if you look at this is the typical one uh, loom what I have shown uh, uh, consists of various parts to start with the warm beam and which will be having these are the warps right and these are the threads yarns and being placed properly and this will be separated. If you look at this is known as heddle and there will be holes here right in these heddles right and this where will be going through that right. And there are two heddles here which will be going up and down and depending on the some threads or the warp will be going up corresponding to this and this is the lower one right. And it can be operated by hand these heddles and it can be operated by the leg also. And uh, this is your reed 
and uh, this is the uh, the beater this portion is a beater also they call it as a sword this is you call it as a beater or this is beater or is called sword also so um, and it is having this at the what you call um, wave to will be moving to with the help of set settle as I told earlier it can move towards from left side if it is left side here to right and from the right to left whenever this headels will be uh, down so that this uh, warp which is on the bottom will go to the top and uh, the cloth is being formed and the cloth is being wound to the cloth beam here. So, uh, if you look at let us uh, look at this process of uh, weaving uh, with the help of uh, this a uh, video. <coughs> so, if you look at here these are the uh, beater or the sword which is moving and this is the reed and through which this is the what you call the subtle is moving up and then whenever is moving the hand towards the left it is the moving towards the uh, left side the subtle and when it is on the right side it is moving to the um, what you call <coughs> right if you look at the leg here the leg is will be making the handle to move up and down and that will make the thread to uh, go up and down in between this there is a wave shape through that subtle will be moving so that the wave will be uh, going through the warps. So, and then of course, you will have to press it towards the your uh, side so that the cloth will be made and this is the process by which it is being done. And let us look at another uh, loom that is known as uh, loin loom and loom parts and this is uh, having various parts I have shown in number that is one is bamboo uh, serves as a same purpose as a warp beam in the horizontal uh, loom and two is the thin uh, bamboo rod act as a lease rod which will make it to you know uh, lift it uh, sometimes is whenever required and this bamboo sword which will be uh, making you know uh, for shading this uh, warps kind of thing separating this uh, warps which you call shading and the bamboo handle sticks which will be held uh, going through this loop so that it will be separated out and this is the wooden beater which is being used for uh, after the wave to being passing through the warp to bring this uh, closer to the cloth um, that wooden beater is being used. And the wooden rod uh, this thing serves uh, same purpose as a cloth beam in the horizontal loom and uh, this is the leather back which has to be give little uh, you know what you call tension over the whole thing and that will be on the back of the uh, weavers which will adjust. And this is a continuous warp which is uh, there here and uh, this is the woven fa uh, fabric what it is uh, will be having. And uh, this is the mat spread, mat spread on which the weaver will be sitting and this is kind of uh, things are being used uh, very much. Let us look at how it will be working. So, if you look at this is the lease rod through which this uh, warp uh, will be wounded. The, let us say this is the odd yarn or the thread or the string whatever you call and this is going down right. This is on the up and this is going down right and uh, then uh, these are all being uh, done in a systematic way odd and even order for all the uh, warps and bamboo short stick uh, will be there will be separating both the both this uh, odd and even uh, yarn or the warp uh, this and this is the heddle rod which will be using you will have to lift it up and down and there is a loop through which this uh, wear will be uh, going that is the your warp will be passing through and uh, this is yarn to make the handle right these are the end is there the this will making a loop here and this is the weft 
which will be uh, need to be done with this process. And uh, if you look at this is the similar one only thing is that in this case the bamboo sod is uh, being separating out, but the heddle rod is lifted. As a result it has been uh, space is created separation between this the even warp and the odd warp is made and then so that uh, weft can be passing through it right. Again this is going from left to the right side and again you will have to take this uh, heddle position down and then uh, it will be going from right to left and making a group like that. So, uh, this is the process how it is being done. Uh, with this um, lion loom and basic processes remain same. And we will now look at a, a video right and uh, so that it will be clear how it is uh, functioning. I am ready to open the shed that is controlled here by the shed stick. So, I am going to place my sword or my beater in the shed, straighten out the head off tip my sword on the side while leaning back and the shed will pop open. Get my hand inside there and then replace my hand with the beater and beat. Now I can pass the weft, placing the weft firmly in the shed, leaving a loop, pinching the side, drawing the weft in gently till it just touches that last warp. Now I'm going to open the head or shed. Okay. I place my hand like this against the head or hook my thumb over the top and I'm going to roll the head or forward. At the same time taking tension off the warp by leaning forward. And you can see that the shed is opening. If there are any sticky warps back here, I'll just ease them down with my thumb. But this has opened very cleanly. Place my sword or beater inside. And draw the warps down to the weaving line. Pass the weft. Pinching drawing the weft in. So, uh, let us look at another uh, loom that is the pathola loom and uh, uh, and uh, various parts if you look at this is the warp beam and this is the detour of that same one like and this is a stick which is being warped to this uh, wound to the, this warps and cross mechanism with the uh, intended uh, stick these three are uh, and this is the said rod which will be helpful to make this separation of these warps. And uh, this is the pressure bar, this one is the pressure bar and uh, this is the handle right. And uh, this is the heddle rod mechanisms um, uh, which will be helpful to separate and then uh, this is the sword which is being used uh, uh, for use as a beater so that the wave will be coming closer to the cloth and uh, this is the shuttle which will be passing through this <coughs> V shape or the warps uh, between the warps it will be passing through and this is the of course the breast beam. And if you look at uh, this is the same thing uh, what we have seen from the side views and this is the warp beam and this is the detour same as that and then uh, this is a stick which is being used to separate this thread and uh, this is the cross mechanism with intended stick and uh, mainly it will give a tension so that this will be separated out and this is the said rod. And uh, this one is the pressure bar with the handle, it will be giving the pressure so that this will go down, I will show in the next one. And this is the heddle rod mechanism which will be uh, helping to actuate with the help of this handle. 
and this is the sword which will be uh, pushing this weft to the cloth side and this is the cloth beam. So, if you look at now it is like this and when you give a pressure with the help and with the help of this handle, this handle will be pulled out the lower string to the up and then this will be going down because this pressure is there. So, it will go down and this uh, through which you know like this is if you look at the warp will be passing through and with the help of the sword it will be uh, brought closer to the uh, to the cloth. So, um, and this is of course, the cloth beam and these are the same thing whatever over here. So, uh, let us look at how does a patola loom works and, uh, and it is basically from Gujarat and also other places it will be there and this is the handle which is, is using here and this handle is coming out and then this is the design which is coming that this is the bar, uh, what you call beater which is coming closer. Uh, this is the beater which is using the hand for pushing the beater and uh, this is the uh, shuttle which moves by that way and uh, and this design is uh, quite a bit uh, you know and then it is very useful. Of course, two persons are doing but a single man can also handle this one. So, there is a another uh, frame hand looms which is very easier with the same principle. It will be having warps here and then uh, with this uh, weft carriers there will be, it will be going this side left to right and again it will be going to the left to uh, sorry right to left. Of course, there is a things which will be changing this uh, uh, warps orientation such that it will be moving one over other. So, this is the same principle whatever, but it is the hand one and is a very simple one even you can design in your home and then do that. There is a another one which is known as a peat loom. It is being used in several parts of our country and the peat is being produced here and uh, these are the handles which are having and you can use these handles uh, and uh, these are the warps going on and the cloth being produced and um, here shuttle is transformed from one box to another. This is the main features. And uh, people claim that to control moisture looms are settled in the flow that may yarn get uh, you know uh, get moisture kind of thing. This uh, I do not know how the moisture control takes place and what will be the size of the pit uh, I, I, I could not manage to get data. And production quantity of this loom is enhanced as compared to primitive uh, loom. So, uh, therefore, um, it is having advantage therefore, people have used this uh, pit one has to explore how and why it is and um, the advantages of pit loom is uh, basically texture fabric can be produced by this loom and it can accommodate a great quality of webbed yarn in the pond winding package and average waiver can wave in case of uh, peat loom like it is not because it is not that uh, you need to have a balance between the leg and the hand. It is a little easier because all is being done uh, maybe by the uh, hand itself. So, uh, because their coordination is very essential and fly shuttle and back beams have been introduced here to remove some fabric fault such as yarn breakage and not because this fly uh, this thing shuttle will be done by the again with the help of hand and which is easier to do that. So, these are the advantages of the peat looms and um, let us look at another very interesting thing uh, tablet waving apparatus like uh, which looks like uh, these things like it will be having uh, this is the card which having here in of course, it is the two holes, but there might be several four holes. This is the warp right and uh, the, 
it is a very simple system and this is the ends of uh, dhabla being finished with the card weaving this is the product what you will be getting out of it. And this card can be of various design it can be uh, 5 holes it can be 4 holes like triangular it can be hexagonal kind of things shapes you can design of your own and depending on the design. And these tablet looms um, uh, are still used in Varda Gujarat for uh, making dhavas in sals or body garments or waving tapes or tying bundles of religious manuscript because not very big cloth can be made out of this but strips can be made very easily. And this still use and uh, even if you want you can uh, you know make yourself this uh, thing with the help of a even small wood and this thing you can do yourself in your home it is very easy to do that. Let me uh, also uh, show you that how does it work with the help of a video so that you will be uh, you will appreciate the how easy it is and this is the uh, card which is being used and uh, these are the threads and uh, so uh, this is the wave which is passing through you can look at it like it is a very easy of course very few traits you rotate this card so that this uh, some ports uh, the warps the one set of warp will go up or down and then you know like that way it will create a space in between through which the Web can go from left to right and right to left that way, right? And this itself, this uh, uh, you know, where uh, this yarn uh, web can be used as a beater. Lot of functionality is being embedded into the same single sort. What what is carrying in the hand, right? So that is the beauty of uh, this simple system, and which is known as tablet weaving. and you can design differently. And the design of the fabric will be dependent on also the card uh, design or the number of holes and other things what you can manage. So, let us look at uh, the dyeing process which is uh, uh, you know basically a method of color, coloring the text for its beautifications and it can be done in uh, during the manufacturing of textile itself. Uh, sorry, it can be uh, done at any stage of manufacturing textile, it can be fiber, it can be iron or it can be in the fabric stage itself. So, um, the color such as red, pink, orange, purple, green, green extra are obtained by using different natural ingredients and uh, particularly uh, in ancient India people are using the natural one not only in ancient India in other parts of the world also they might be using earlier days the natural uh, uh, pigments for the coloring. And beside this a modern which is also known as dye fix, fixated uh, it was used and which aids in chemical reactions that takes place between the dye and fiber. So, the dye will be getting absorbed to the yarn or the fabric. And we will uh, look at uh, some of these things what we use, uh, what our ancestors were using. Uh, red, if you look at uh, for the getting red, you will look at the pur pulp of Halila that is the uh, Terminilia Chebua or Haritaki. Haritaki is basically a uh, Ayurvedic name you can know it. and flower of Dhao or alum. Alum is a basically modern which is nothing but a fi uh, dye fixative and what uh, you need to do that uh, um, you know the process will be like this you will have to boil all the ingredients together in a pan and then dip the cloth in it turn it with the wooden ladle or some other things and when uh, material has absorbed all the dye take it out then you will have to rinse with the water and dry it 
and then wash it for few times in the clean water and this is the usual process what will be. Let me uh, tell you one thing that the pulp of halila is being used here, but there might be several other uh, you know kinds of um, uh, natural uh, flowers or this uh, wood or even the seed can be utilized. I will be showing you in the next slide about uh, you know what are the varieties we can have. Let us say pink color, for getting pink color you get kachner bark with the alum and again same thing dip the material in alum water right and dry it that is a little different one and boil the bark of kachin water, clean the liquid dye material and then dry it. This process is little different than the first one right here first the uh, the cloth has to be in the deep in the alum water and dry it and then you boil this one and then put this cloth into that. And for getting orange of course, you can use turmeric as sahav e khasa and lemon. This is another uh, natural material and which uh, of course, is, is in uh, Urdu. Add a lemon in the turmeric right and sahav e khasa and dye the top in the solution. I think lemon here it will be used as a dye fixative maybe right I guess. So, uh, for getting purple color pulp of alila is to be taken and hira cassis and flowers of dao and uh, you will have to boil the alila in a sulphate of iron. This is used as a basically maybe like a mordant and clean it dip the material in the liquid dry it okay, and subsequently boil alum in water. Of course, the alum also is being used, dip the material, dry it mix well of the flower of dao and all together. This process is a quite little complex, boil it in water and dip the material in the boiling liquid, keep in turning uh, it with a wooden ladle so that it does not burn and the dye is evenly absorbed by the whole piece. And you will have to take the material out, rinse it, wash it 4 times in a pure clean water, dry it and then beat it into a smoothness. So, if you look at this process is given and then you know like one can also find out their own pro, you know way of by heat and trial. And if you look at the blue color we can get from uh, indigo that is the neel which is uh, basically from India and the saiv hikasa and sour lemon. And uh, of course, a lot of research has to be also done, it might be there also, um, you will have to look at it. That what makes this each constituents, you know, what are the roles being played by each constituents has to be looked at. What can be done here, first color the material in indigo and water solution. Add sour lemon in the sai vi khasa and then dye the material in this solution. So, that means different procedure is given for the different kind of things one has to appreciate that. And for the another color green you can say kabuli mother which is the red and uh, green means you will have to take the outer skin of the pomegranate. You know pomegranate we use particularly in winter season it comes and that can be utilized for the uh, as a part of color. And you will have to use alum which is nothing but the modern. All are mixed together then boil and strain the liquid, dye the material and dry it subsequently. Off white is the vermilion which is being used and saffron starch which is also being used and pound the vermilion with the water, dye the material and dry it, boil the saffron in water and strain it and color the material in liquid and again dry it. Then after that add a starch in the same liquid, dip the material and dry it right. And this is the procedure which is being laid out. Of course, one can uh, you know find out it and trial and then see that is, is the optimum method of doing or there might be a better method. And people have used therefore, it is being quoted in the literature which I have used one paper and then I have taken from that. And as I was telling that uh, sources of different colored dyes and moderns uh, can be several of them. In the last table what I showed you one of each of them. But for example, for the getting red dye we can use uh, safflower, 
casella pinia madder logwood uh, khat palak indian mulberry kamla and lac and if you look at these are the parts to be used like flower wood wood and then flower even insect right that also can be utilized as a color and different modern mostly the alum but there is the last modern is the tin tetrachloride which is commonly known as stannic chloride right and similar things will be there for other colors also i am having those data but i think uh, i will not load you with this so many data and if you want you can really utilize it so uh, let us look at printing because it is very much uh, you know where used earlier times even today also it is being used and uh, basically it is a localized dyeing which is undertaken manually uh, on the cloth itself by different methods and we will be discussing about them two method one is block printing and the other is kalam kari printing and block printing if you look at wooden is being generally used and uh, uh, the wooden block or uh, you know uh, um, is the simplest one and which was used in earlier time and it is uh, of course one of the slowest method of textile printing and even the stone can be utilized and some other material let me show you that this is the uh, block which is made out of wood and you can make a design by engraving it you know and um, then you can have various design and block of different shapes and sizes are made by cutting the wood or the engraving it right depending upon your design and top of uh, the block has a handle like if you look at this is your handle uh, for printer to grasp it or hold it and each block has two or three cylindrical holes which is not shown here right in is not shown here these holes cylindrical holes are used for the passage of air so that it can really uh, help to dry the things and also it will allow excess dye to squeeze out during the printing right these are two purposes will be there one is of course uh, for um, passage of air and also the squeeze out excess uh, dye which will be given for the printing. So, uh, printing is uh, carried out generally from left to right by dipping the block in a dye first and then presses into uh, it onto the fabrics and of course, this is a practice one has to do and lot of concentration is required for doing that because if you make some error then you know it will be spoiling the whole uh, fabric or the cloth. So, uh, let us look at now uh, uh, you know how does this hand printing work by looking at a video. So, if you look at uh, this one he is trying to make a design out of wood by uh, you know engraving it uh, and then it is pressing it by the this is the handle and these are the various design what is being shown here. And uh, this design you know can be utilized here So, there is a Kalam Kari is another uh, printing was used extensively for cotton fabric in earlier days which uh, incorporates the pattern on the fabric through the dies not through the loom right because it is of course uh, by the uh, lateron uh, this uh, you know pattern is being placed on the cotton lateron um, by the kalam karis kalam kari means kalam basically pain and it is a uh, this thing and uh, it is an art form and a fragment of kalam kari printed cotton fiber has uh, been found in Mohenjadaro, which goes to the your what you call Indus Valley civilization something around maybe 3500 BC. So, this is the one I have shown here the uh, Kalam Kari work in this place it looks to be very intricate you know like lot of 
patience is required. Kalamkari prints uh, two technique using of course, block and other is hand drawing. And uh, what uh, one has to do is that first to uh, maybe uh, you know print uh, or make a line sketch on the cloth with the help of a charcoal stick or, uh, or any other uh, uh, kind of color pencil and followed by the reworking of contours with the column or the pen. And this is the another work which I am showing, it is a very quite intricate and lot of uh, work and patience is required to make this. So, um, and these are being also being used uh, today in our country uh, because we are very good in, uh, you know, even today we are having love for the art and then we are good in doing that. So, therefore, we are still using it. Of course, it is a very labor intensive. Let me show you a video like uh, how this Kalamkari printing carried out on a cotton. Canvas is now all set for the best of the artists who begin by sketching the motifs with dried charcoal sticks. The black color obtained from processing iron, jaggery and salt water is applied first. Alum is used as the mordant to fix the colors. Once the outline is complete, the details are filled in with the various colors all of which are extracted from vegetables, roots and barks and a myriad of natural sources. The different hues are layered in different stages and treated for fixing. The pictures come to life as pinks, yellows, greens and blues emerge as they are applied and fixed with great care to prevent the colors from merging with each other. Once the artist completes the work on the fabric, it is left on the riverbed with the right side to the sand. The river, sun and sand tease out the final colors in their right intensity. And the fabric meets the river for the final wash before it begins its travel to tell the stories it carries. So, uh, let me now, uh, you know, conclude with few remarks this um, textile uh, technology what we have seen. If you look at textile technology was not a rare technology for ancient Indian as some of the oldest evidence of textiles come from India only. And adoption of modern technique had a serious impact on textile sector as we had seen uh, and discussed due to which the production is increasing. But the employment of people and self innovative skills of people are decreasing with increase in uh, thrust or wastage of fibers, rigidity in design and complexity in overall process. And also we are losing the creativity which is the innate nature of human being uh, with our people because of adoption of this mechanized uh, method of textile production. And eco-friendly dye and sustainable process for textile production should be encouraged which was a part of our ancient culture. And proper method for its implementation should be developed and followed and we should work it out. Little bit mechanization may be called for, but not that we will be using uh, you know electricity and other things and it will be very costly also. More research on traditional textile technology without resorting to the mechanization is the need of the hour and uh, so that we can develop a lot of employment and also keep our creativity and uh, peace of mind and uh, also the satisfaction level with us. So, various policies initiatives, scheme intervention like cluster approach, aggressive marketing initiative and social welfare measures and loom sectors would be undertaken to revive our ancient technology by increasing the income level of waivers and overall growth of various processes associated with and this must be integrated with the agriculture. So, uh, what I would like to suggest all of you that you should get experience in this by doing little bit this yourself because some of the things uh, loom technology you can develop yourself like your uh, card technology and then other things which are a simpler one, right. So, which you can do like tablet waving apparatus and other things you can do very easily. 
And beside this, I would suggest if you could uh, uh, visit some of the uh, existing hand looms and make a video and also learn yourself and send us so that we can next time you will be incorporating your videos in our course for the education purpose. Thank you very much.